Hello everyone, welcome to our first lecture on the introduction to human anatomy. In this lecture we'll talk about some basic definitions uh, and then we'll talk about the organization of the body. We'll start with our basic definition. So since you guys are taking an anatomy class, uh, we definitely need to understand what anatomy is. So first it's just anatomy in general. Anatomy in general is just the study of structure. And that can be the structure of anything, right? The structure of, you know, the human body, like we're doing here, uh, the structure of cells, the structure of plants. Okay, anatomy just in general is the study of structure. Uh, sometimes you'll hear people use a different term and another term will be uh, morphology. So whenever you hear people talk about morphology, that basically means the same thing. All right, so let's talk specifically about our course, about human anatomy. So in human anatomy, we're, uh, this is the study of normal structure. And when I say normal structure, I mean without disease. Uh, a normal structure of the human body. Okay? Now, there are lots of little subdivisions of anatomy that are, that are kind of important in our course. I will be focusing on here from time to time. So uh, you'll hear me say gross anatomy a lot. Gross anatomy is the study of body structures that can be examined by the naked eye. So things that you can see without a microscope or anything like that. Um, a common technique for go studying gross anatomy is dissection, which um, <clears throat> is an important tool, uh, oftentimes in anatomy. An important uh, technique, excuse me. Uh, next is going to be surface anatomy. This is the study of landmarks, like shapes or markings, on the surface of the body that reveal underlying organs. Okay. Uh, next is functional anatomy. Uh, which is the study of, uh, or basically like talking about function uh, along with structure uh, or studying, you know, structures based on what they do. Yeah. And then you have pathological anatomy, which is the study of the structural changes in cells, tissues, and organs caused by disease, which is, you know, kind of what you guys are, are mo most of you guys are moving on to. Uh, after this. So you, you got to understand the human anatomy first before you can really understand the pathological. Uh, so next is physiology. What is physiology? Physiology is the study of function. And again, that's just in general, right? You can study the function of a lot of things, right? You can have cell physiology, you can have plant physiology. Okay? Our focus is human physiology, or actually I should say your focus will be human physiology when you take human physiology. Um, but that's the study of the normal function of the human body. Now, again, when I say normal function, that means without disease. So the last definition here is pathophysiology. Pathophysiology is the physiology or function of disease processes. And again, you know, for many of you, this is what you guys are going to be moving on to in your pre-professional programs. And so you have to understand uh, anatomy and physiology before you can understand, you know, what things are like when they when they go wrong or when when you have disease. <clears throat> uh, next is going to be organization of the human body. So um, this is going to be uh, an answer to actually what seems uh, when when you start this class to be a very simple question. The question is, what are you made of? What is the body made of? And some people will say, you know, atoms, some people will say cells, some people will say organs. Technically, all of those people are correct. Uh, that Those uh, are just different levels of organization of the human body. The human body really is made of all of those things, but at different levels. And that's what this is here. Okay? So what we're looking at here is uh, the order of organization from simplest to most complex. So from simplest to most complex, we have the chemical level, the cellular level, the tissue level, the organ level, the organ system level, and then the organism level. So you can actually see that in the image here. Okay, so from simplest to chemical to most complex organismal or organism level. Okay. Now let's talk about a little bit about each of these levels. So let's start with the chemical level. Uh, the chemical level is going to be, like we said, the simplest level of organization. Uh, so first thing to talk about are atoms. Atoms uh, are the smallest structural unit 
uh, of all things, living and non-living. Atoms, uh, what you can see a sort of a basic atom here with a nucleus and an electron cloud. Atoms uh, are going to come in many different types. Uh, and uh, those different types are shown to you on a periodic table. So if you have, haven't taken chemistry yet, you, you will learn all about this. But this tells you your different types of atoms, which are organized into what we'll call elements. Now, long story short, the, the, the way that you organize these in your periodic table is by the numbers of number of protons in the nucleus. So the difference between hydrogen and helium and lithium and beryllium and boron and carbon is the number of protons there in the center of that atom in the nucleus. Um, that's that number that you see at the top there that is increasing as you go down this periodic table. Now, these different elements are going to have different chemical properties um, that, that are going to make them sort of behave different. Now, these atoms uh, to these atoms in the human body are usually not in their individual forms like this, though sometimes they are like sodium and potassium and calcium and magnesium. Um, but in many cases, they're not. They're going to be bound together with other, um, with other atoms by chemical bonds to form what are called molecules. Now, um, to remember which of these atoms, because you know not all of these atoms on the periodic table are going to be important uh, in the human body. To so remember the ones that are that are going to be most abundant and very important to us, uh, the easy thing to remember is to remember chomps. So C H C H N O P S chomps. So that's uh, for carbon, H for hydrogen. O for oxygen, N for nitrogen, and P for phosphorus, which are the most abundant elements in all living things, not just human beings, but, but all living things. Now, there are going to be some other important elements to us, like, like I said, sodium, Na here, potassium, K, calcium, Ca, magnesium, Mg here. Um, you know, occasionally in the future, there are going to be some others that you'll talk about, copper, nickel, cobalt, uh, zinc, um, which is uh, important. Uh, uh, you can see that here. These are all kinds of little trace elements. Uh, chloride, or excuse me, chlorine here, also important. Um, so, you know, when you take chemistry, pay attention to these chemical symbols. You know, a number of these are going to be pretty important to you. All right, so remember that to make a molecule, you just uh, bind two or more of these atoms together. Um, now, uh, by chemical bonds. Now, molecules in the human body are going to range in size from very small, like, you know, oxygen, which is just an oxygen linked to another oxygen, uh, to things that are very, very large, like lipids, proteins, where literally you have like saying proteins, you can have 10,000 uh, uh, amino acids linked together. So these molecules can be very, 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 very large. Okay. Uh, some of the important small molecules are water, which you see here, uh, carbon dioxide, which you see here, uh, oxygen gas, which I didn't show you. Uh, this, the one here, they're showing you C6H12O6. This is a a sugar called glucose. Okay. Uh, so lots of small molecules that are kind of important, but there are also large molecules that are really important. In fact, mo most large molecules in living things are what we would call organic. Organic means carbon containing. So these uh, atoms, or these, uh, excuse me, these molecules are made of mostly carbon and hydrogen. Uh, and there are four important classes of organic uh, macromolecules. So macromolecules just tells you they're large. Organic means, like I said, carbon, mostly carbon and hydrogen. So four important classes of organic macromolecules that are essentially the building blocks of all cells in the body. So those four are depicted for you here. Carbohydrates or sugars, proteins, lipids or fats, and uh, nucleic acids here in pink.
Next is going to be the cellular level. So in the cellular level, your um, the body is made up of cells. Cells are the smallest structural unit that could be considered a living thing. They're the smallest living units. Nothing smaller than a cell is a living thing. Okay. Uh, and inside, uh, our bodies are multicellular, meaning we're composed of many cells. Um, and in the human body, they're going to be between 10 and 100 trillion cells in the human body. So most people don't have a reference as to how big a number that is. You know, we know it's a big number, but we don't really know how big a number. Uh, but just to give you something side by side comparison, the, in the Milky Way galaxy, right? The galaxy is a really big thing, a large number of stars, right? There are billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. There are billions of cells in your brain alone. So the number of cells in the human body is an incredibly large number. So again, 10 to 100 trillion cells are the best estimates. Now, last thing on cells is a definition. So cytology, which we'll go into in the, in the next lecture, is the study of cell structure or the anatomy of cell cytology. Uh, next is the tissue level. So tissues are going to be made up of cells and the surrounding material, the stuff around cells. So that stuff around cells is called extracellular matrix or just matrix. So tissues, kind of the simple definition, tissues are cells and matrix. Okay? Uh, so there are four basic tissue types that make up the human body, right? So like 10 to 100 trillion cells, but only four tissue types four basic tissue types. So you see those listed here. Uh, you have epithelial tissue, uh, which is the tissue that separates the inside of the body from the outside of the body. You have connective tissues, which are tissues that connect other tissues together structurally and functionally. Connective tissues are the most diverse type of tissue. Just to give you an example, both, uh, or excuse me, a bone, um, tendon, and blood are all connective tissues. Can you think of m three more different things uh, than bone, tendon, and blood? But th they're all connective tissues, and we'll sort of explain why that is uh, when we get to the histology section. So histology is the study of the structure of tissues. Uh, the next tissue type is muscle tissue, uh, which is tissue that contracts to generate force. And then neural tissue or nervous tissue, which is tissue that communicates with and controls other tissues. So next level is going to be the organ level. Uh, organs are made up of two or more tissues, and organs are going to perform a variety of functions. Um, so a lot of times we kind of think of you know organs as things that do only one thing. But what you guys are going to learn in this course is that's pretty much never true. Organs are always structures that are going to do real, quite a few things, uh, typically. Even things you might not think, like the heart, right? We think the heart and the heart, oh, the heart just pumps blood, right? That's all it does. But that's actually not the case. The heart not only pumps blood, but it also produces and secretes hormones that are important in regulating blood volume and blood pressure. So... Even things that you might think are, are, you know, they just do one thing. That's not really the case for organs. Or most organs have multiple functions. Now, you guys probably know organs don't work alone, right? The, even the heart, right? The heart doesn't work by itself. The heart needs other organs to help it perform important tasks. So uh, organs are going to be grouped into systems called organ systems, uh, which is, uh, you know, two or more organs that, that will perform vital functions. Now, I want to say vital functions because uh, most organ systems, and in this textbook, there's, they're organized into 12 organ systems, uh, are uh, organ systems that you cannot live without, meaning that they perform functions that are necessary or vital for life. Uh, the only uh, exception to that rule is the reproductive system, but any other um, 
organ system, you know, if that organ system fails, that's not compatible with life. So that's why you say vital for organ systems. Technically, th there are some organs you can live without, right? You can live without a gallbladder. Uh, there are people who live without a spleen. Um, you can live without one of your lungs or one of your kidneys. So uh, it doesn't get vital until you get to the organ system level, okay? In, in many cases. Okay. Now, these organs, these 12 organ systems, which I'll go over in a second, these 12 organ systems are what make up you, which is the organism. Okay. So I have a slide here that shows you kind of the tissues. Uh, you can see the cells, and you can see the stuff between cells, which is going to be ground substance and fibers. And again, we'll talk about that when we get to the histology section. Okay. And so this is going to be our these are going to be our slides on the organ systems. So, like I said, your textbook lumps them into twelve organ systems. Now, for all of these organ systems, uh, you need to know all the organs depicted in, in all of these organ systems. And then you need to know the basic functions, which are going to be the, the little de descriptions that you see under the organ system here. So, for example, for, for the integumentary system, you should know that technically here, uh, nails like fingernails and toenails and skin are all organs of the integumentary system. Um, you should be able to list them if I ask you. And then uh, you should also know that, hey, the, the integumentary system synthesizes vitamin D and uh, produces or has sweat and oil glands, so produces sweat and oil, um, that it protects deeper tissues from injury. Okay, so I can ask you these kinds of questions about each and every one of these organ systems. So you have 12 of them, the integumentary system here, the skeletal system. So each individual bone, each individual joint, and each individual cartilage is an individual organ of the skeletal system. You have the muscular system, where each individual muscle is an organ of the muscular system. So these two systems are going to have the, the most organs by far. Um, the nervous system, uh, you have the brain and spinal cord. Each individual nerve is considered an, an individual organ. The endocrine system is going to consist of a bunch of glands, pineal gland, pituitary gland, thyroid gland. The okay? uh, cardiovascular system is composed of the heart and the blood vessels, so like the arteries and veins. Uh, and then this panel has the other six, the lymphatic system, which will have lymphatic organs like the thymus and the spleen, uh, tissues like red bone marrow, uh, and then other organs like lymphatic vessels and ducts. Uh, the respiratory system, um, you'll see organs here. Digestive system, probably the organs you're most familiar with. Urinary system is real simple with just the kidneys, the ureters, the urinary bladder, and urethra. And then uh, you'll notice that your text uh, divides male reproductive and female reproductive systems. So you'll see male reproductive organs here, female reproductive organs here. And this is where you get 12 from. Sometimes, you know, in different textbooks, you'll get different numbers. But uh, one way you could see that uh, some textbooks would say 11 organ systems instead of 12, uh, where they lump the two male and female reproductive systems just into one reproductive system. Then you have 11 organ systems, not 12. But we're going to go with the 12 that, that your textbook uh, uh, goes over. All right, so finally, some questions. So question number one, which of the following is not one of the four basic tissue types? Right. So the correct answer to this one is C, endocrine tissue, right? Our four tissue types are epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and neural tissue. Next question, the larynx is part of which of the following organ systems? So I know, you know, you guys are watching this video, you, you unless you've got those slides in front of you, which would be a good idea. But if unless you got those slides in front of you, you probably don't remember. So you can pause the video here, go back to your notes, look at it, and, and have, use the notes to help you figure it out. Right? Or, or actually, in this case, the PowerPoint slides will, will help you figure it out. So the larynx is going to be part of the respiratory system. Um, but like I said, I could give you an organ and ask you which organ system it belongs to. I can give you an organ system and ask you ask you which of the organs listed 
are part of that system. A lot of different ways I can ask this question.